Hey there, everybody, it's Ryan from Cataclysm Now, and tonight we'll be playing the first scenario in Long Longstreet Attacks, uh, which is the Round Tops. It's a fairly small scenario, it's sort of the introductory training scenario. It's got a small footprint, um, I don't use most of the map, and it's principally um, Hood's division, uh, in this case comprised of Robertson's Brigade and Law's Brigade, attacking the Union position. The scale in this game is about 140 yards per hex, and then each strength point is about uh, 50 men. So for example, we've got Robertson here, we've got eight points each, each. Um, that'd be about 800 men. And then Laws here, um, substantially larger with uh, 24 uh, strength points. And opposing them, are uh, elements of two other divisions, uh, Bernie's and Barnes. Um, we have um, Ward's division represented, or parts of Ward's division represented by the 4th Main and the 2nd Sharpshooters. And then we have got <clears throat> Barnes's division represented by Vincent's Brigade. Um, 20th Main, made famous for the uh, uh, halting action against the um, the Confederate attack they defended Little Round Top with Chamberlain and the like. But we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and just do a playthrough and uh, we'll start pulling some chits. All right, starting on uh, the 4.20 p.m. turn, um, we had uh, Vincent's brigade move up behind little round top and assumed defensive positions. Uh, there was a bit of a firefight between the 4th Maine and the 4th Texas, uh, but then the um, rest of uh, Ward's brigade was able to pull back closer to little round top, essentially ceding control of big round top um, to uh, the Confederates. We'll have to sweep through here and actually capture it uh, for the victory point. <clears throat> the Union's going to spend most of their time defending the two uni um, victory points on top of Little Round Top. No additional fighting this round, or this turn I should say. Law's Brigade slowly move, making its way up a Big Round Top. It's steep um, terrain costs uh, to move up. It's a two for woods and then additionally another two to go up a steep slope, one for um, a small or um, a lower grade slope. And even with the uh, general or the brigade order of maneuver, they only get six points. So a lot of times through this terrain, they can't expend all six. So laws slowly making their way up and they'll be flanking the south. And then Robertson was able to maneuver a little better along uh, this creek here. Um, moving, moving themselves closer. Hopefully the, the Confederates will try to coordinate their attacks, hit Ward and then roll up the flank. Um, Robertson would be, wouldn't be doing himself any favors if he kept moving north and then swung east. So we'll go ahead and move on to the 4.40 p.m. turn and see if the Confederates can make any headway. A lot of inactivity this 4.40 p.m. turn. Union drew a firefight, but they weren't really in a position to fire the uh, Law's Brigade here attempted to move, but the uh, United States player played a Rebel Fatigue, which essentially limited their movement to two, which in this sort of terrain uh, left them immobile. Robertson's Brigade has now been activated and is moving up. Um, didn't participate in fire combat because uh, the line of sight uh, for this crest here was blocking it. But now they've moved up. And they will be engaging uh, with Ward uh, with close combat. Ward, though, has the opportunity to fire, defensive fire at either one. So I think they will try to do, um, inflict some damage on Robertson. And from there, we'll resolve close combat. The 4th Maine's defensive fire proved to be ineffective. The um, 4th Texas was the uh, lead unit for the assault, supported by the 5th. Uh, Texas Regiment, and they wind up uh, breaking and routing uh, the 4th Maine uh, pretty badly. They're in broken box number three, 
So it'll be a solid three turns or about an hour before they have an attempt uh, to rally. So now we've got the uh, second sharpshooters under Ward. They're sort of isolated here, uh, but obviously we still have Vincent's Brigade strong on Little Round Top. I had to go back and fix something. Actually, when the 4th Texas advanced, um, I was interpreting the rules. Um, any unit that's under skirmish order, uh, they have to fall back. Um, if anybody moves... into an enemy unit that moves adjacent to a skirmish order unit forces the skirmish unit unit to immediately withdraw one hex away so they actually fell back <clears throat> um and then or should have fallen back i should say the confederates pulled the rebel yell but so they could have moved forward and engaged the 20th main and 83rd pennsylvania in close combat but with defensive fire being triggered first and it'd be regiment versus regiment without the support of law, the uh, Confederates decided to um, hold back. So we are moving to the 5 p.m. turn, kind of a slow crawl here, uh, a little bit of action with um, the 4th Main being knocked out, but um, we'll go ahead. Um, the Union have some artillery that will be coming onto the board. We'll see if it'll make a difference against the Confederates. Law's brigade was able to sweep around Big Round Top, uh, getting the victory point here. And then uh, different combinations of um, brigade reserve movement, um, they were able to accomplish that and they were, they were just activated. Before that, though, um, Vincent's brigade was able actually to shuffle down a fire to no effect um, from uh, Little Round Top against uh, the 4th and 5th Texas. Ward fell back to cover um, the uh, Hazlitz battery here, uh, the 5th, <clears throat> um, scooted them down the road so that they can cover um, the flank here. The um, borders of the scenario are the 35th uh, hex row or column uh, inclusive. So this is essentially the edge of the map here for this. So if the 47th Alabama, if they try to envelop, we've got an artillery battery here uh, that will be able to provide some support. But we just pulled the rebel yell. Uh, and so the 15th Alabama is moving up north and they're gonna engage the 20th Maine here um, on the very uh, far left flank of the Union line. The rebel yell was met with even louder um, fire from the 20th Maine. They uh, rolled a 66, which is the best you can roll um, on the CRT, uh, forcing a tough cohesion test Fortunately for the um, 15th Alabama, they didn't suffer any material losses, but they wind up rolling a four, which is a morale hit and a retreat too. Uh, but the Confederates had a um, Army of Northern Virginia vets chit held back. That allows them to re-roll one of the die for a cohesion test. So they re-rolled the... Uh, second die, and actually the result was worse, and you have to keep it. Uh, so, well, it's not worse. It effectively, it was the same. So they took a morale hit, no material loss. They're just shaken, and they were pushed back. Down to the last chit for the 5 p.m. turn. Robertson will be activated. They will be doing a fire combat. 5th Texas against the 16th Michigan, and the 4th Texas against the 83rd Pennsylvania. And then they will move up and they will probably um, assault uh, the, the peak of Little Round Top. Um, 16th Michigan only has a cohesion factor of two, so yeah, it's the weakest of the bunch. So they have uh, the best chance of breaking them there. Robertson's 5th uh, Texas was able to dislodge the... Uh, 
fits in 16th Michigan. Fortunately, uh, well, uh, the 16th uh, Michigan's uh, defensive fire um, didn't have any effect, but they were able to escape unscathed um, without any morale or depletion results. However, that leaves the Confederates in command of two of the three uh, command points or victory points. So we'll go ahead and, uh, well, that was the last chit. So we are moving into the 520 turn, just turn five. Uh, we'll be having um, a rather large brigade under Weed, um, 140th New York. And then we'll also have the 48th Alabama under law coming on as well. All right. Uh, Weed's uh, brigade was activated first. I initially was going to have him come down the road and plug uh, the gap um, presented by uh, Robertson's brigade. But stacking limits for roads are enforced at all times. You can't have more than um, 10 strength points. So instead, uh, Weed has moved down the road. Um, and is approaching from this direction. Using Brigade Reserve Movement Chit, uh, the 48th Alabama was able to come up and form with the rest of the brigade. But now Vincent, Vincent's brigade has been activated. So from here, they're gonna be able to fire um, yeah, they're, they're, they're going to be able to unload. So they'll be able to fire and then move, and then the most likely will counterattack here, and we'll see how they fare. Waves of rifle fire pushed back at the 5th Texas. Um, the 16th Michigan wind up moving up. They're not going to be in the center anymore because their um, cohesion level is pretty weak. Um, the 44th New York and the 83rd Pennsylvania had an opportunity to close combat, but they didn't want to risk the um, defensive fire from that. They're going to be sitting pretty on these, uh, oops, on these steep hills. Actually, it's only steep along here. From here, it's just a normal slope. Uh, so Vincent's brigade is now um, bracing for the inevitable counterattack from Law and Robertson. A little bit more fire was exchanged, uh, but Law's uh, with, with really no results. But Law's entire brigade, minus the 15th Alabama, um, which actually should move here, just for a mini follow up will be hitting the 20th Maine and the 83rd Pennsylvania. The 48th will probably attack um, the 83rd, and then the 47th and 4th Alabama will hit the 20th Maine. The Confederates took quite the shellacking. Uh, the 48th Alabama um, was forced to retreat as a result of the 83rd's defensive fire. Um, and then the defensive fire uh, for the 20th Maine didn't do anything, but with only seven and seven versus the eight, they didn't, basically they didn't even give, get enough column shifts. Um, they were able to get away with no uh, depletions, but uh, they were forced to retreat two and they are shaken. So half of Blois Brigade is shaken. Uh, they'll have to spend a turn to rally. Um, which they just may have to do. The only problem is Hazlett now has a direct line on the 47th Alabama, so at the beginning of the next term, the artillery will be able to target them. But uh, we still have Robertson's brigade to activate, um, and we'll see what they do um, if their chit is pulled. We've got a couple of the command chits still yet to be pulled, including Rebel Yell, so that may make a difference. Robertson's brigade was activated. Their uh, fire combat, uh, they both targeted the 44th uh, New York um, to no effect. So they decided to close distance. Before they can have close combat, though, the 44th will most likely um, shoot at the 4th 
Texas. And then depending on the results there, we'll go ahead and resolve close combat. The 4th Texas did take some casualties, but they were able to drive out the 44th New York. Uh, and the 5th Texas uh, went ahead and seized um, the top of Little Round Top again. So right now the Confederates are back in a winning position. They're just going to need uh, to hold that. Um, it would really help if they could dislodge the rest of Vincent's brigade here. Um, but we'll have to see what the law is going to do, whether or not they're going to rest or they're going to push in um, with uh, two of their um, regiments shaken. The last chip pulled uh, was Rebel Yell, and um, Law decided to take a risk, uh, sending in the 15th Alabama, which was shaken, um, which with a uh, cohesion rating that high and a strength points that high, that's not terrible, uh, that's not the worst. Uh, and then with the Rebel Yell, uh, once they, they get a two, um, a two column shift on the uh, CRT, However, when they closed distance, the defensive fire um, had a routine uh, cohesion check, but they uh, suffered a depletion and then were forced to retreat back one. So, um, which turned out to be even worse because now the 15th Alabama is at 50% um, capacity and their co cohesion rating is now <clears throat> at two. So. Most likely in the next game turn over the next 20 minutes, um, this brigade is going to have to rest uh, and not engage. But we'll see what happens with the 47th Alabama and the artillery. Anyway, we're going to move on to turn uh, the 5.40 p.m. turn. Uh, and we've got two turns left before the end of this scenario. Artillery fire from Hazlet uh, did nothing to the 47th Alabama. And the first chip actually drawn was Rebel Yell. So Robertson's uh, 5th Texans uh, were on the crest of Little Round Top and decided to um, hit the 16th Michigan. Defensive fire came in from the 83rd, but it was only at 50%, no effect. Um, and then the defensive fire from the 16th Michigan actually pushed them back one. So the next chip that was pulled is the uh, Hood's Division. <clears throat> and um, they're going to be activating Law. Law really can't um, rally. He would have to fall back because uh, he can't be within three spaces of an enemy unit to rally to recover material loss and morale loss. So they, uh, and with the tough terrain, it would be too hard to fall back and then move. You know, they've got two turns, so they they really have to make it count here. So... They'll activate, they'll move in. Well, they'll do their, uh, they'll issue fire combat, then move in, then receive defensive fire, and then close combat. So we'll see where we stand uh, here in a few moments. The United States line is beginning to crack. The 20th Maine was pushed back off the edge of Little Round Top. Uh, and we had the, even though the 48th Alabama was the lead, uh, the 4th Alabama went ahead and moved forward. Now, considering that the last um, unit to be there was the Confederacy, they are currently in the lead with two points to the Union's one. So we still have the most of this turn left, and then one turn left to go after that, the 6 p.m. turn. So right now, the Confederates are in a good position to twin. Okay, we're here at the end of uh, the 5.40 p.m. turn. We've got one turn left, 6 p.m. Um, the uh, Robertson's Brigade was able to drive most of Vincent's Brigade off of Little Round Top. So they are in a possession of the heights here. Uh, the, ins the rest of the battle is going to be over uh, the, the top here. Depending on uh, chits and how they're drawn, um, it's going to come down to the wire. So yeah, we'll move on to the next turn. We'll do artillery, uh, and then we'll start drawing chits and see who can claim victory. The U.S. forces are certainly making their roles uh, count. Even though the artillery didn't um, have any effect on the, I think the 47th Alabama, 
uh, some skirmishers actually were able to push them back. And then the first chit that was drawn, well, the, the first chit was ward. Those were those um, sharpshooters and skirmish order are. Um, but the other one was a firefight and uh, the 44th New York laid in some murderous fire into um, the uh, 5th Texas, which reduced them by one and then pushed them back uh, two. So they are um, disrupted and uh, battle-worn, <clears throat> which leaves basically command divided between Robertson and Law in terms of coordinating, taking back that. Well, they still technically have it, but the uh, yeah, United States, um, uh, basically Vincent's brigade is in a good position to retake that and win the scenario. As you can see, the Confederates are um, really struggling here. Uh, there was a firefight, uh, like I said before, that drove off um, Robertson's 5th Texas. Um, so they were rather weakened. And then when Weed was activated, um, they attempted to swing south and to hit him, but defensive fire repulsed him. But then um, Vincent was activated, and they wind up uh, dumping a bunch of fire into um, uh, this hex here, where the 83rd Pennsylvania is, um, and drove back the 4th Texas. They actually survived one of their um, <clears throat> break tests, which was good, I guess, and the 44th New York um, retook uh, Round Top. So we are running down to the last chits here. Um, doesn't look like they'll be able to physically move in there, but again, we'll pull the chits and see where we land. But <clears throat> Vince's brigade has reestablished their um, their initial defensive line, uh, and they are in line <clears throat> to win uh, the game if essentially Law's brigade um, or Robertson's um, can't pull through. In a stunning turn of events, the Confederates have pulled uh, pulled out a victory here by seizing a little round top. Activated Robertson's um, division, <clears throat> and they, or not division, brigade moved up. <clears throat> the uh, 83rd Pennsylvania was able to offer supporting defensive fire, but it was only at 50%. Uh, it didn't do anything. And then the 44th New York um, did its defensive fire. That didn't do anything. Uh, but then we went to calculating the odds, and I can't remember which column they were on, but it was rather low. But they wind up rolling um, somewhere in the 60s, <clears throat> which then provoked a, uh, a routine uh, close combat cohesion test. And then from there... Um, they depleted um, the Union, <clears throat> uh, the 44th New York, and the um, surviving 4th Texas was able to move into the hex. And because the Union doesn't have any more um, jets to pull, uh, basically the Confederates retain the initiative and uh, they've won. So the final count of victory points is two to one, um, the Confederates get one for big round top, and then they also get one for uh, this hex here, while uh, the United States has uh, one point for um, the other side of um, little round top. So that was a, a real close uh, run there for uh, a bit. It started off a little slow, but with the Confederates um, really pushing um, I, I, I didn't really think that they would be able to pull it, uh, pull it through, but <clears throat> they launched that one last desperate gamble and they were able to push through uh, defensive fire and, and, and drive uh, 44th New York off. So well, that's the first um, scenario, uh, the round tops. And uh, we'll be looking to expand. Uh, the next one uh, they'll be doing is the Whirlpool, and that will be the battle for the Wheatfield, Devil's Den, and Hawks Ridge. 
So if you're still watching, um, thanks for tuning in. And as always, we'll catch you on the next one.